Alexa, how many seashells did she sell by the seashore? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, that number is dependent on the ecological indicators and economic pressures of the specified time. In other words, she sold the exact number of shells she could obtain to the number of people who desired that product. Did that answer your question? Yes. Thanks for your feedback. Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Today I am coming at you with Chapter 9. We're already nine chapters in of my whole darn CD collection. This is the series of videos where I show you, in each episode, 90 of my CDs from A to Z, every single CD I have in my library, guilty pleasures and all. Uh, so yes, I have a uh, playlist of my whole CD collection that you can see, fr uh, you can find from my YouTube channel's homepage, so you can literally sit for hours uh, over a day, non-stop, when this is all said and done, eventually, uh, seeing all the CDs that I have, if you have literally nothing else to do, right? Anyway, I don't have any uh, recent arrivals, which I like to uh, talk about before I get started with the, the chapter. I like to highlight any recent arrivals that I've gotten that would belong in chapters before this one, but I don't have any this time, so let's go ahead and dig right in. Uh, last time I left off with one Herbie... Herbie Hancock album, Possibilities, and today uh, here's another one that I have. It's called River, the the Joni Letters. This is a um, album of interpretations of Joni Mitchell songs, and this, I believe, won the Grammy for Album of the Year back in its year 2007, so the 2008 Grammys. So, uh, yes, it has Nora Jones, Tina Turner, Corinne Bailey Ray, Joni Mitchell herself appears on here, Leonard Cohen, and yeah. Lots of good stuff on here. Not as fond of it as I am of his Possibilities album, but hey, it's a good album nonetheless. Now here we have, uh, as I would just mentioned a minute ago, Guilty Pleasures. Here we have Hanson with their breakthrough album, Middle of Nowhere. This was actually their second album. Their first one was an independent release. And hey, life's too short to be a music snob, remember. But if all you know of Hanson is Mbop, listen beyond that. You cannot judge Hanson by that one song. Literally, they, they have talent. It's so much talent. They're still recording, obviously. They're in their, what, their 30s? And uh, yes, they're a band from Tulsa, Oklahoma, a uh, city that I've become rather fond of, despite my limited time there in the last year or so. So, uh, but yeah, this album uh, has a few good songs on it. Uh, Speechless, uh, Yearbook is a very good song on here. And... Uh, a, min a Minute Without You is another good one, but so, but yeah. But that is only the beginning. I actually have, what do I have, five Hanson albums, and they only got better from there. Uh, there's their, uh, not sophomore album, their third album, uh, this time around, this is actually the Australian import edition that has uh, two or three bonus tracks on it. Uh, this one, it might be my favorite album, except they tried, this is so far removed from their teen pop sound on Middle of Nowhere, that it almost sounds forced. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't really care. I mean, there are some great songs on there. Uh, the title track, If Only, is one of my favorite Hanson songs ever. Uh, so that's a fantastic one. Uh, Runaway Run is great. And, oh, there was another one there. Uh, sure About It is a very good one as well. So, good stuff, but not, one, not quite one of my favorite albums. But this one, Underneath, this is, I believe, my favorite Hanson album. And this one basically strikes a great balance between um, Middle of Nowhere and This Time Around. Uh, an equal balance of hookiness and substance in the lyrics. Great songs on here. Um, Lost Without Each Other is my favorite Hanson song, hands down. Uh, Deeper is a fantastic song as well. Uh, Crazy Beautiful is another good one. Strong Enough to Break is a fantastic song. So if you're going to listen to one Hanson album, I would recommend this one. Underneath is the name of it. But this next one is probably my second favorite one, and it's called The Walk. And it is a very underrated album. I I never see or hear anybody talking about this album at all. But uh, yeah, some fantastic stuff on here. Great Divide is a great song. Uh, Georgia is awesome. Uh, Running Man is excellent. Um, Blue Sky. And 
Something Going Round is another fa uh, fantastic song. So, yes, Underneath is my favorite album. This is probably my second favorite. Uh, but the, the last Hanson album that I own is Shouted Out. It is their, what, their sixth album, I believe. Uh, I did previously own a couple more uh, beyond this one, but um, I read stuff about them lately that uh, some of their social media content, uh, one of the brothers at least, was rather questionable. So, uh, And I've never really been super fond of the albums after Shouted Out, so I just eventually I just got rid of those kind of... You know, just that article about Hanson left a bit of a sour taste in my, in my mouth. Please ignore the crows that you might be able to hear out the windows. I've got the windows open. It's a beautiful day here. Uh, anyway, moving on from Hanson, we have Calvin Harris. Uh, this is his album Motion. And I own this album for two reasons. Haim features on one track, and John Newman features on another. John Newman is a fantastic soul singer. Uh, and I actually have a couple of different um, EDM albums that feature John Newman, and basically for that reason, the fact that John Newman appears on them. So I'm a kind of bit of a collector of all of all John Newman um, non-album tracks, I guess you'd say. But uh, yeah, good stuff. And sorry, hope you can ignore the crows, because I've got this big CD rack here sitting on my lap, so I can't easily get up and close the window. So anyway, uh, next up here is one you may have seen in my thumbnail. Uh, George Harrison, his album Cloud Nine, which was produced by Jeff Lynne. Uh, excellent stuff. It's got uh, the song Got My Mind Set On You. Uh, ironically, or maybe not so ironically, since it sit, seems to happen a lot, uh, his perhaps his most famous song is a cover of somebody else's song. Uh, that's that's what the, the, the fickle mainstream music listeners, the people who aren't really, really into music, are, are to blame for that. <laughs> Which, which I was at one point. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, condemn those people. But anyway, good stuff. Good, good album. And that is actually the only George Harrison album that I have. I like the Beatles. It's just I'm not a huge fan of the Beatles. I don't know why. Or, or the Beatles solo stuff, particularly. So, uh, just, I'm not sure why. Anyway, on to the next one. This is a solo album by tonic frontman Emerson Hart. It's called Cigarettes and Gasoline. It's a great album. Uh, I, I have to all of Tonic's, I think it's all three of their albums. I don't know if they've made any more beyond that, but uh, when I saw this one out, uh, that he had a solo album out, I had to pick it up. Uh, if You're Gonna Leave is a great song. I think that was a single off there. And I Wish the Best for You, that's a, an excellent one as well. Um, Ordinary is a standout song. One of my favorite songs is Flyin'. And that's, um, it uses the metaphor of a kite, flying a kite. And it's just an amazing ballad. Just one of the best ballads I've ever heard in my life. But, uh, yeah. A good album if you happen to come across it. <clears throat> then we have a Swedish, I believe, uh, artist, pop artist. Eric Hassel is his name. And uh, this album was available internationally, uh, but it was only available in CD form in the States as a promo, and I'm not sure why. Uh, it was never available for retail, but this guy is excellent. He's amazing. Uh, check him out. I'm pretty sure he streams. I'm pretty sure this album is available on streaming. It's called Pieces. Uh, but yes, uh, Hurtful, uh, Don't Bring Flowers, Isn't It Obvious is one of my favorite songs. Um, Standing Where You Left Me is awesome. Uh, love Me to Pieces. I absolutely love that song to pieces. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yes, he's a guy that just uh, got overlooked. Um, for some reason, I just think he could have and should have been a star here in the States. But uh, alas, it never happened. And then his uh, follow-up follow album, We Dance. That's another Eric Castle album. And I confess, I don't know this one nearly as well as I know Pieces. Pieces is one, is one of my favorite albums of the 2000s. Uh, but yes, this one is... Uh, Maybe not as good, but it's all—it's still got some really good songs on it. And we have a... Uh, this guy was a kind of a minor teen idol. I mean, he, he only released one album, I think. Well, no, he released several albums. This was, I think, the only one that... The only one he released in the States, I believe. Uh, Chesney Hawks. Uh, it's called The One and Only. It was released under a different title outside of the States, like in Europe. Uh, he's, a, he's a British uh, artist. And yet this is, for some reason, one of my favorite albums of the... 90s? 
1991, uh, the one and only, the title track. Uh, that was, that's been covered by a few artists, so you would probably recognize it if you heard it. And um, Nothing Serious is Great. Uh, one Word, or no, One World, excuse me, is awesome as well. So, uh, yeah. If you happen to find it in the used section in a budget bin or something, check it out. Then we come to one of my favorite artists and one of the uh, most extensive discographies that I have. So this is, uh, it's going to take a little while to cover this one artist. I have the fog print from my hand on the jewel case. I had to wipe it off. Colin Hay. Uh, you've heard me talk about this guy. Uh, th this is a green tinted jewel case amongst the, the tinted jewel case that I have. This is his debut solo album, Looking for Jack. Uh, this He put this one out about a year after Minute Work broke up. And uh, Circles Erratica is my favorite song on the album. Uh, Hold Me is uh, was the big first single that... Uh, big. Uh, the first single from the album that he had. Uh, it's excellent. Uh, Way of the World, or Ways of the World. Yes, Ways of the World is another great song on the album. Then uh, his next album, Wayfaring Sons, released under the name The Colin Hay Band. Uh, very good album as well. Then we come to his uh, independently released albums. Uh, Wayfaring Sons were, was released on MCA, and Looking for Jack was released on Columbia. And then, I guess, neither la label wanted him anymore, so he basically started his own label. And that's what everything since then has been released on. Topanga is uh, his next album. And uh, Waiting for My Real Life to Begin, I love that song. And I Think I Know, uh, Lost Generation is a great song. And then this here is is the album that I basically rediscovered him from. Uh, it's called Transcendental Highway, and this was uh, on the in the budget section of a record store in Eugene that is no longer around. It closed up back in two thousand five, and I hadn't checked out any of Colin Hay's stuff in a long time. Found this album, decided to pick it up on a whim, and that's what got me back into Colin Hay. That basically galvanized my Colin Hay um, fandom ever since. Uh, the song Don't Believe You Anymore is one of my absolute favorite songs, my favorite Colin Hay song. And My, Br my Brilliant Feet, that's a great uh, demonstration of his wry sense of humor. And uh, I'll Leave the Light On. And so, yeah, a bunch of good songs on that one. And then next album, Going Somewhere. And I actually found this one uh, in Skip's Going Out of Business Sale. Uh, if you look at my old Skip's videos, you'll see that I showed this in... Uh, my haul video. And uh, Beautiful World is another one of my favorite Colin Hay songs. There are several Colin Hay songs that are some of my favorite songs of all time. Beautiful World is one of those. And uh, he actually does a, uh, I believe, an acoustic rendi rendition of Circles Erotica on this album, as well as Waiting for My Real Life to Begin and My Brilliant Feet. So yeah, this is basically an acoustic album. It's not live, but it's acoustic renditions of Mostly stuff that he's released in the past. So, and then his next studio album, Company of Strangers. This has got some good songs on it as well. Uh, the title track, Company of Strangers, as well as uh, Lifeline is another great song. And this has the studio version of Beautiful World that I love so much. And then here is a, another kind of a compilation album, Man, Man at Work. And this has uh, alternate mixes or acoustic versions or new recordings of his past stuff. That's a, if, you, if you want to like a good introduction of Colin Hay, pick up Man at Work. And then we have, coming into his most recent stuff, Are You Looking at Me? Uh, and that's the title track is uh, excellent, another very humorous song. And uh, Up in Smoke is a really, really good song. And Me and My Imaginary Friend. I like that one as well. So, but yeah, he's just a great um, folk rock or folk pop artist. And I've mentioned time and time again that uh, Colin Hay just has that voice. I've been listening to for, listening to him for so long, through, basically through my entire life since I was a teenager, that his voice is just so comforting and so it's like an old sweater, I, I, I like to say. And then his uh, next album, American Sunshine, uh, we're up to uh, 2009 is when this one was, re was released. Uh, oh, California is a great song. Uh, I Can't Get Up Out of This Bed. 
and then pleased to almost meet you. You can tell by some of the song titles. He's, just, he's got a great sense of humor. And then uh, Gathering Mercury is his subsequent album after that. Uh, let's see. Far From Home and... Gosh, there, there, there have to be other good songs on that one. I cannot re recognize them by their titles. And then Next Year, People. This was his 2015 release. Uh, the title track, again, the title track is excellent. And uh, Waiting in the Rain is excellent. Are We There Yet? And uh, Trying to Get to You is a great song. Then we have Fierce Mercy, his 2019, 2017 album. Uh, Come Tumbling Down is great. A Thousand Million Reasons, that's a great, great track. And... Uh, Oh, I'm Inside, Outside In. That's another good song. Then we're up to his most recent stuff, his covers album from last year. Uh, I Just Don't Know What to Do With Myself. Lots of great, great covers, as you can tell by the hype sticker. It's got some covers of songs by these artists. And then his, his most recent album from this current year, uh, you saw it in my... Uh, Favorite albums of uh, the year so far, video. Uh, now now and the Evermore. Very, very good album. And that catches us up with Colin Hay. His complete, dis uh, almost complete discography. I, I think I'm missing another one of those um, acoustic renditions of mostly older stuff albums. He did two of those. Um, Going Somewhere and another one. I don't have that other one, at least not yet. <clears throat> Had to wet the old whistle there. And now on to Darren Hayes. Uh, this guy you might recognize from the uh, pop duo Savage Garden. This guy is one half of Savage Garden. This is his solo album, obviously. His do solo debut. Uh, Strange Relationship. Insatiable. And uh, oh, Spin is another one of my favorite songs. That was not a single, though. But yes, uh, excellent pop uh, more upbeat than Savage Garden, but the same general sound, kind of like those that synth pop '80s inflected stuff. And then we're going into some country here. Hunter Hayes. Uh, this is his uh, the deluxe edition of his debut album. Uh, some good stuff on it. Storm Warning is a great song. Uh, Somebody's Heartbreak is uh, an excellent one. Uh, Everybody's Got Somebody But Me. That's a good song. And then his sophomore album Storyline which is another good one. Um, Invisible was a great song. That was a really heart-wrenching song. And then we're on to uh, another synth-pop kind of artist, uh, Imogene Heap, with her album Speak for Yourself. Of course, uh, the big, big uh, hit song off of this one was Hide and Seek. You heard that one basically everywhere. And But there's lots of other good stuff on here. Uh, Clear the Area and... Oh, there's, there was another one on here. Maybe that was it. Uh, Headlock is a really good song as well. So. And then we're into some classic 70s and 80s rock stylings with Heart. Uh, this is the two-disc essential volume of their greatest hits. What can you say about Heart? Just excellent rock music. And then another classic artist we have here is Jimi Hendrix. Uh, Rainy Day, Dream Away. This is one of those... Um, uh, Hear Music Opus Collections, which was available from Starbucks, and uh, I actually have a few of these uh, scattered throughout my collection, all thanks to my sister. My sister was basically a Starbucks addict, and of course, being a huge music fan, whenever she saw a CD there at Starbucks, when they used to sell CDs, uh, and it tickled her fancy, she would pick it up, and I became the eventual beneficiary of those. So I actually do have uh, Hendrix's um, Are You Experienced? I just recently bought it. I haven't listened to it yet on CD, so that's why it's not here in my uh, collection proper. It will be eventually, though. And uh, now we're getting into another discography, and this is partially thanks to my sister again. Don Henley of the Eagles. Uh, this is his, I believe, debut so uh, solo album, I Can't Stand Still. I Can't Stand Still. That's what, yes. White on a Very Pale Background. That's why I was having trouble reading it. And then his sophomore album, Building the Perfect Beast. Uh, I guess this one and uh, End of the Innocence 
were, I believe, were in my sister's collection. Oh, as was uh, the one after that, Inside Job, which this one was uh, after, what was it, after 15 years or so? He didn't put out any albums for 15 years uh, after End of the Innocence, and he put this one out. And then, I believe, was it... Um, <clears throat> No, it wasn't in Skip's Going Out of Business sale. It was during, uh, when I was up in uh, Portland, I think, at uh, Music Millennium, I found Cass County, the deluxe edition. Uh, it was still sealed, and it was in the used section, so it's like, I figured that was the only Henley solo album I was missing, so might as well pick it up and complete my collection. But yes, uh, so much good stuff that Don, Hen Don Henley put out. The Boys of Summer, uh, All She Wants to Do is Dance, uh, The End of the Innocence, of course, and uh, The Last Worthless Evening, and The Heart of the Matter. That's a great song. So, yeah. Some people love to uh, hate on the Eagles, but I don't, because they were one of my sister's favorite bands. And then we're coming into... This was a recent acquisition that I got, oh, maybe about six months ago. Uh, Clarence Frogman Henry, a blues artist. Uh, so this guy is great. I can't remember... Did I find this? I think I might have found this in the $1 section. I can't remember. But anyway, uh, Ain't Got No Home is a great song. And uh, there were a couple others that... Uh, oh, I don't know why, but I do. Oh, yes, that that was used in a commercial in the last year or so. I don't know why, but I do. But uh, this guy was uh, somebody I ignored for far too long. If you don't mind blues, not the, you know, oh, woe was me kind of blues, but the more soul tinged blues. If you like that, check out Clarence Frogman Henry. Excellent stuff. And then we have Herman's Hermits, a classic band from the 60s. Uh, retrospective, this... I don't... No, this was not one of my sister's CDs. This was actually one that I got myself. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I almost dropped it. Uh, 26 songs. But, uh, yes, they put out so much great stuff. This was one of those... Not one of the uh, British invasion bands that you necessarily took seriously. This was one of the more ear candy bands. You know, they made silly songs. I'm into something good. I love that song. And uh, Can't You Hear My Heartbeat? And Mrs. Brown, You've Got a Lovely Daughter. And then I'm Henry the Eighth. I Am. That's a great song. If it, It's got a great uh, play on words in the title. Listen to I'm Henry the Eighth. I Am at some point by Herman's Hermits. You're going to love that song. You're going to get a good laugh out of it. Trust me. And then we have... This one, I can't remember where I got it. Uh, Ty Herndon's Greatest Hits. Yes. I decided I wanted to uh, check him out uh, a couple of years ago. Not bad. Pretty decent stuff. Uh, actually, I have not listened to it since I first got it, so it, it might not uh, stand up to repeated listens. It might end up leaving my collection. I don't know. But then this guy is a singer-songwriter that uh, very few people have heard of. He kind of got buried in the uh, in the glut of music back in 2004. He was not promoted very well. So it's, uh, in my opinion, the record label is to blame. But this guy is fantastic. Ari Hest is his name. And uh, he's put out... Uh, well, I have two albums. He, I think he's put out more than that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, They're On To Me is a great song. And uh, Fascinate You is uh, excellent as well. And uh, Consistency is a good song. But yeah, he's got a, a bit of a uh, scru a bit of a gruff, deep voice. And you, you've, you've heard me talk time and time again about how I like unique voices. Uh, he's got a, bit of a fairly distinctive, unique voice. He's just great. And that album is just as good as the follow-up, Break In, or The Break In. And... Uh, <clears throat> So Slow is probably my favorite song on here. And Right of Way is also great. So, yeah. Um, if you're interested, if you're curious about singer-songwriter type uh, rock pop music, check out Ari Hest. I would recommend him. And then this one I picked up... Did I pick him up in Dallas, I think? Yeah, I think I got his this one at... Um, oh, that great big store in Dallas. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Zach Hexum. I had owned this CD a long time ago, got rid of it, and was stupid to do so because when I picked it up again, I realized how many great songs are in here. Um, let's see. Spicy Streak is pretty good. Uh, Outside Opinion is a great song. Uh, one Spin is another good one. Met a Girl Like You Once. And this is another kind of a...
kind of singer-songwriter, a bit more into the rock vein, and he is the brother of Nick Hexum from 311, I believe, if memory serves. And then we're getting into, uh, we have here we have an American Idol, Taylor Hicks, his uh, debut album. Not bad at all. And then we have a group called Hidel. This was a Canadian band, and they were a uh, spin-off group from one of my favorite Canadian groups called The Moffats, which uh, you will obviously see their CDs uh, coming up. Oh, one, two, three, four chapters from now. Uh, but yeah, these are, guys are good. Uh, much more of a indie rock kind of a sound than The Moffats. They were The Moffats were much more pop, but then they kind of went into a bit a bit of a rock thing. But yeah, these guys were kind of uh, kind of post grunge ish sort of rock. Uh, decent stuff if you can find their stuff online. I don't know if uh, it's available for streaming or not. But uh, anyway, we are at the halfway point, so allow me to take another sip of water. Another drink of water. And then, <clears throat> moving right along, I'm just going to power through this and... Uh, We'll see how, how uh, quickly I can go without rushing myself. Uh, here we have another... This guy was a, a bit of a teen idol, a very, very minor teen idol. Uh, I think it was kind of in the middle of uh, the post-boy the post -boy band era. This was shortly after boy bands, and so I think uh, the music realm was still recovering from boy bands. I don't, don't think they were quite ready for um, young male solo artists at that point. But here we have Tyler Hilton. No relation to Paris Hilton. Uh, this guy, he is great, though. He's just, he's fantastic. And this was the only major label album he made, and I still hate that to this very day, because this one was so, so good. Uh, when It Comes is a great song. Pink and Black is another fantastic one. Uh, hmm. It's been a while since I've listened to this, I am discovering, because none of the rest of the songs uh, by their titles seem familiar to me. And this has a second disc. Oh, this has the single. Oh, a non-album single of How Love Should Be is the second disc in here. And uh, so, but yeah. A uh, good artist who I need to listen to again because I haven't in a while. And then we have, here we have another one that uh, almost nobody has probably ever heard of. Josh Hoge. And I believe he is the brother of Will Hoge. And this, again, this is a fantastic album. Severely underrated. Uh, it just kind of disappeared into nothingness. Uh, it's singer-songwriter rock, pop, but he blends a lot of other genres into it, like uh, a little bit of country, a little bit of R&B, a, uh, uh, a little bit of soul here and there. But yes, it's excellent stuff. Um, Beautiful Distraction is excellent. And uh, Take It or Leave It is probably my favorite song on here. And it features Mark Broussard, who is an, another uh, singer-songwriter. And uh, Addicted is another excellent one. So, yeah, check out Everything She Was by Josh Hoge. His one and only, I believe, uh, studio album. Just wonderful stuff. I've got so much good stuff in here that nobody's ever heard of. Uh, but you've probably heard of this, uh, this person, Billie Holiday. I was about to say this guy. She's not a guy. Uh, Billie Holiday, fantastic, early rhythm and blues soul singer, uh, just a wonderful voice, amazing stuff. And it, of course has her hit song Strange Fruit on it. An excellent uh, civil rights anthem, one of the very first, probably the very first civil rights anthems out there. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous song. Well, I guess it's not really an anthem, is it? Not uh, by the traditional sense, anthem. Anyway. And then we have another group that you've probably heard of, The Hollies, a uh, classic group from the 60s uh, with um, Graham Nash. Yes, Graham Nash. Uh, but yes, all the hits are on here. Carrie Ann and... Uh, gosh, what? There were some other... They had some other hits, didn't they? That I can't remember right now off the top of my head, but uh, yeah. Great stuff. Great, great 60s stuff. Can't get enough of the classics, really. Then we have Buddy Holly, another artist you've definitely heard of. And yes, again, this is one of those definitive collections that has all the hits on here. I mean, the fact that he was only, uh, he only recorded for, what, a few years, 
And the fact that he put out as many fantastic songs as he, as he did, it just boggles the mind. Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. And then we have a more <clears throat> contemporary uh, classic group, um, Hootie, Hootie and the Blowfish, with their album, Cla Cracked Rear View, their classic album. And this is a Japanese version with, it has three, three or four bonus tracks on it that were not available on the American edition. And they're actually uh, interspersed, more or less. Uh, well, yeah, there's there's one that is put in as, uh, between two tracks near the end of the album, and the other three are tacked onto the end. So, yeah. As opposed to nowadays, all the Japanese bonus tracks they just put on the end of the album, whereas this one, they snuck one in a little bit uh, earlier in the track list. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. It's a classic album. Maybe it was overplay overplayed. Maybe it got more attention than, than it deserved. But it's one of those albums that you can go back to, and it, it's aged pretty darn well. And Despite that, I don't have any other Hootie and the Blowfish albums. But I do have a few albums by Hoover Phonic. This is one of those... Uh, I, think they're, I think they're classified as trip-hop. Maybe. Maybe it's more just EDM kind of stuff. But yeah, they use some kind of uh, interesting grooves and beats and stuff. Kind of like Jamiroquai, in a way. And, I, and I'm not sure which one came first, Jamiroquai or uh, Hoover Phonic. But uh, yeah, some funky, cool, weird kind of stuff. Uh, very, very chill, chill kind of stuff. And their next album, Blue Wonder Power Milk. They had the interesting album titles. Their first one was called A New Stereophonic Sound Spectacular. And then their third album, I believe. I, there, there could be an album before these ones that I have, but these are three consecutive albums of theirs. Uh, the Magnificent Tree is another one. Uh, the uh, lead-off track on here, Auto Harp, is one of their, probably one of their best-known songs. So. Uh, an interesting band, if you have not checked them out. They are Belgian, I believe. Maybe it says so on here. Yes, Bel Belgish. <laughs> Belgian. Uh, yeah. They're Belgish. That's no relation to Elvish. Anyway. No, I'm not a Lord of the Rings geek. I just happen to know that that's the language they speak, Elvish. The rest of it is kind of lost on me. Anyway, uh, on to a much more recent artist that you've probably heard of, Niall Horan, uh, one of the uh, One Direction dudes. Uh, his, his debut album, Flickr, and it is the um, deluxe edition. And I also have Heartbreak Weather, his follow-up album, and again, the uh, deluxe edition with a pair of bonus tracks. Thank you, Target. Then we have, this is a group that, um, this one, uh, I have memories of this one tied to Skips, because on, this would have been about a year, oh no, several years before they closed, uh, because this one was from 2014. I saw this on the racks at House, at House of, no, Skips. Saw this on the rack at Skips, uh, had never heard of them before, but I liked the look of the album cover, so I picked it up, just on impulse and ended up really loving it. They're called the Hot Sardines, and as you can kind of tell by the cover Im the cover image, they're a bit of a throwback um, jazz band, you know, a, a Tin Pan Alley slash jazz group. Uh, they're just fantastic, very, very lively, lots of fun to listen to. Uh, they do uh, Baby or uh which is a great a classic uh, Great American Songbook standard. Uh, what a little moonlight can do, and honeysuckle rose. Honeysuckle rose is one of my favorite songs, and your feet's too big, and so yeah, a lot of old classic songs they uh, revive and uh, give new treatment to. They're they're just, they're just an excellent band, and I also picked up their sophomore album, French fries and champagne, and yes, the album is just as fun as the album title. Uh, lots of good stuff on here, and I think this album though has a, a more original songs on it than their previous one. And this one features uh, Alan Cumming. Yes, the actor Alan Cumming is on a track on here. So, uh, but yeah, wonderful group. Uh, lots of fun listening to them. <clears throat> and then we get into one of the classic pop divas from the 80s and 90s. And uh, this was another CD that I talked about in my uh, 
Oklahoma Hall video, the, the more recent Oklahoma Hall video from this past March. And this one was just sitting there in the racks at a vintage stock, and I, which I had been to a couple of days earlier and completely missed, but it was still there. It's something I'd been looking for forever. Whitney Houston, the um, deluxe anniversary album of her debut self-titled release, and it's got a, a second disc of, uh, or it's, um, it's actually got bonus tracks, which are remixes and stuff, and it's got a DVD. So, uh, but yes, it was retail price, and it is now, it's now out of print, and is going for $25, $30 uh, even used. It costs that much, but I paid 16 bucks for it, new and sealed, at vintage stock. So, I love it when I come across those sleepers that have just been sitting there, nobody buys them. I, I, I struck gold that day there. And then uh, her sophomore album, Whitney. Uh, this is, I think the uh, her debut is the only one that's gotten a uh, anniversary re-release. So this is the original version of Whitney, her follow-up. Uh, I Want to Dance with Somebody is a, a great song. Uh, made popular by the movie Love, Simon, of course. And then um, So Emotional is another great song of hers. And when, Where Do Broken Hearts Go? Fantastic song. And then uh, as you saw in A Bargain Bag just a couple of months ago, uh, the CD single of her singing the Star Spangled Banner live at Super Bowl 25, as well as a, her rendition of America is Beautiful. And now let's have some hosier. Uh, I, I've i kind of been an on, on and off thing with hosier. I picked up his, their, uh, his debut album, got tired of it, got rid of it, and when his sophomore album came out, uh, I decided, okay, give him another chance. And uh, and actually, I learned stuff about Hosier, about the songs on this album, uh, after I had gotten rid of it, which made me want to re-examine it again. And uh, yes, it turns out I've been... Uh, I, I got rid of his stuff too soon. So yes, that one. And then Wasteland Baby. Uh, a, a bit of a long album, but uh, still very, very good. Then we have an 80s... Um, a great 80s band... Pretty well well known, except maybe one of the uh, uh, second tier bands from the eighties, the Human League. They did some great great stuff. Um, Don't you want me? Was their probably their biggest hit, and then they have uh, the Mirror Man, which was fascinating or uh, excellent, and Keep Feeling Fascination, a fantastic song. The Lebanon is another great one, and then the, the song Human is also excellent as well. So check out the Human League if you have not and especially if you are fond of 80s music. Then here we have, uh, I've got actually several albums Albums by this group. They started out as a boy band back in the 90s, and then I believe I believe they took a hiatus for a while, and then they uh, kind of had a second, uh, a, a renaissance or rebirth, if you will, doing covers of um, classic songs. First of all, they did some Motown albums, uh, this is the uh, first of those, Reach Out, the Motown album by Human Nature. And you know how much I love Motown. I've talked about it before. I absolutely love Motown. And these guys uh, have the talent to do these songs justice. I mean, these are, a lot of these are just as good, if not better than... No, scratch that. Nothing is better than the originals, but uh, just as good as the original songs. And the, soft, the second installment of this, Dancing in the Street, the songs of Motown 2... Uh, just as good as the first one. And then for the third chapter of the trilogy, Get Ready, they actually brought in some original Motown uh, vocalists to do guest spots on the album and to back them up. Uh, Smokey Robinson, Mary Wilson, The Temptations, Martha Reeves. So, The only way you can make a Motown covers album better is by bringing in some of the uh, some of the original, uh, the OGs, to, uh, to do back up on it. And then uh, they, after that trilogy, they came out with a trilogy of, um, I guess they call it the Jukebox Trilogy, which is just um, songs, not necessarily Motown, just classic pop songs from the 50s and 60s. And uh, this one is called Jukebox, and it's got some great stuff. Unchained Melody, Will You Love Me Tomorrow, Run Around Sue, Under the Boardwalk, Stand By Me, Good Lovin', Earth Angel, so yeah, just not necessarily Motown, but also uh, Stax soul songs and just soul from uh, other albums, uh, probably a bunch of Atlantic 
uh, soul singles and stuff that they redo. And, and again, these albums are just as good as their Motown albums. And uh, here we have Gimme Some Lovin' Jukebox Volume 2, another great set of songs. You've Lost That Lovin' Feelin', uh, Be My Baby, Then She Kissed Me, Twistin' the Night Away, the Sam Cooke classic. Love that one. Uh, I Saw Her Standing There featuring Orianti. <clears throat> and Save the Last Dance for Me, another one of my favorite classic songs. And then the third installment, Romance of the Jukebox. Of course, uh, as the title suggests, this concentrates on the more romantic and ballad songs from that era. Uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water. Uh, although, well, now that I say it concentrates on the ballads, they have I'm a Believer on here. So that's that was not a ballad. And then... Uh, to Love Somebody, a great song there. Love is All Around, the Turtles cl uh, classic. So, yes, I, I love those albums. I don't play those albums. Now that I'm going through them, I realize I don't play them nearly as much as I should be playing them. Love them. And then we move on to an artist you probably have never heard of before because he is a uh, member of one of my favorite groups, the Connells, whom you probably have also never heard of, except from me. George Hundley. This was his one and, I believe so far, only uh, solo album, uh, Brain Junk. Very good stuff. Uh, his The songs that he did on the Connells albums just seemed to stand out, uh, not in a negative way, but uh, they were quirky, they were kind of fun, and so I was kind of uh, happy to see when he decided to break out on a, a solo side project uh, just by himself. And uh, But on this album, he actually showed some more of his... More of his uh, subdued side as well. This wasn't just the more outlandish type of things that he did, w did with the Connells. So, excellent album. And then we have an indie pop rock artist named Eric Hutchinson. Uh, Singer-songwriter-ish kind of guy. Uh, great stuff this guy does. Um, okay, It's All Right With Me is uh, the lead-off track. It's a good one. And then uh, O oh is another good song on here. And then uh, Rock and Roll is another really good one. And uh, this is, again, see, that's what happens when I, uh, what I'm realizing when I go through these whole CD collection things is there are a lot of these albums that I have not listened to in a long time and need to re-familiarize myself with. And that was, in a way, that was one of the reasons for doing this series. Um, but yeah, that's the problem with having such a big CD collection is a lot of these albums get neglected and ignored criminally. I wish I had more time to listen to music. Anyway, uh, Eric, Eric Hutchinson continued. This is his follow-up album, uh, Moving Up, Living Down. And uh, this one, I think I enjoy this one a little bit more than uh, Sounds Like This, which was his, the one I just showed you. Uh, I'm Not Cool is uh, kind of my own personal anthem, I guess you'd say. Um, and what was the... Oh, Living, in the, Living in the Afterlife is an excellent song. That's got a great, great hook to it. And uh, Not There Yet is another good one. And Best Days. Oh, and The Basement. The Basement is another good song. Good stuff on here. And then we have Billy Idol. You saw probably saw this one in the thumbnail, if you bother looking at the thumbnails of my videos. Uh, one of the, the Icon series has uh, his greatest hits on here. Dancing With Myself, White Wedding, Hot in the City, Rebel Yell, Eyes Without a Face, etc., etc., <clears throat> One more water break before we get finished. So this uh, this video will probably end up being about 55 minutes long like all the others do. Anyway, Enrique Iglesias. This is his album Enrique, which has... I think this one had uh, the most of his biggest hits. Like, this was his most popular album. The most of his biggest. Is that grammatically correct? Probably not. Doesn't sound so. Anyway, The Rhythm Divine... And Be With You are on here. And uh, oh, the, the uh, Spanish version of Rhythm Divine, uh, Ritmo Total. And uh, oh, Bailamos is on here as well. And Could I Have This Kiss Forever, which is a duet with Whitney Houston. So, good stuff. And I'm thinking about picking up some of his other uh, studio albums. Be because all I have of him now is that one and his greatest hits, which has lots of good songs on here. Uh, oh, Do You Know? That's also known as the Ping Pong Song. 
for some reason. That's it's a cheesy song, but I like that one. And Escape is another good one. So yeah. A decent artist. Then we have uh, these guys I saw on an episode of American Idol. And they just caught my caught my ear, and I'm not normally into this kind of stuff, but uh, they just they just seem to have a charm about them. Il volo. This is uh, <clears throat> translated from Italian. That means the flight, and this is one of those uh, pop opera or popera crossover groups. Uh, they do some good stuff on here. Um, both of the albums that I have of theirs, they do an equal mix of, you know, opera type stuff and renditions of pop songs. Uh, Smile, which was the uh, the classic Great American Songbook standard that uh, Charlie Chaplin wrote. Yes, Charlie Chaplin wrote Smile. And then, uh, yes, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, a lot of these uh, titles are in Italian or Spanish. But yes, that is their debut album. Then I have their sophomore album, We Are Love. And this has uh, Beautiful Day, which I believe is a cover of the U2 song. And... Uh, Oh, I thought it had... Oh, uh, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing. It has an Italian version of the Aerosmith song, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing. Decent stuff. Thinking about getting uh, delving further into their discography. Haven't uh, pulled the trigger yet. And then we have uh, um, another entry in the Life's Too Short to Be a Music Snob series, Imagine Dragons. These guys get maligned to an unfair degree, in my opinion. There's 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 just too much hate on these guys, because they put out some great hooky stuff. Some of it has gotten a little bit uh, uh, devolved a little bit into self parody uh, at one stage, but I think they have recognized that and are uh, trying to avoid that from here on out. But uh, yes, their debut album and this one, I saw this CD on uh, the racks at Walmart, never having heard of these guys, and this was uh, when this was their only release. With you know when they had just released something. But you know, I saw the name Imagine Dragons. Hmm. It's kind of a cool name for a group. So I picked it up and brought it home, and I really liked it. Uh, Radioactive, of course, is uh, the song that uh, got me. And On Top of the World was another one of my favorite songs. So, yeah. what can I say? And, of course, I uh, did not stop there. I picked up their sophomore album, uh, Smoke and Mirrors, which is uh, pretty good as well. Oh, what's... Oh, I Bet My Life is one of my favorite songs. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then Evolve. And ironically, Evolve was when they were starting to devolve into self-parody, as I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. Um, Believer, I like that one. And then uh, Thunder was, I don't know, not one of my favorite ones. Uh, what's the song in here that I really enjoyed? I think it was Starting Over, or, or Start Over, excuse me. I think was one that I really enjoyed. And yes, despite the fact that it's my least favorite album, I do have Origins. <laughs> I was about to say Oranges. No, no. Uh, maybe, it would, maybe it would have been a better album if it was called Oranges. I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah. Natural, or as I like to call it, Natural, because uh, that's how it's pronounced in the chorus. And then, But there was a couple of good songs on here. And again, bad album design. White letters on like an eggshell background. Who thought of that? Seriously, guys, go back to design school. I like the song Zero, okay? You know, bad mouth, you, bad mouth me if you want. But, uh, you know. And then um, this is one of the most recent acquisitions that I got. I had, foolishly, I bought their the uh, Act 1 of this album, thinking that they were going to release Act 2 separately, but they didn't. So I have a bit, a bit of a bone to pick with Imagine Dragons about that, because I had to buy Mercury Act 1 twice in order to get to Mercury Act 2. So, And this one, I actually, it's, it's uh, I ripped it onto my phone, but I actually have not listened to it yet. So, But when I've ripped them into my phone, I count them as having listened to them, so I that's you know and and I put them into my collection at least at that point. So there's a method to there's a madness to my method. Let's put it that way. Now moving on to a group from the eighties, eighties and nineties. This was released in nineteen eighty nine. Indigo Girls, a, a a folk pop group, folk rock. 
uh, made up of two uh, two women. Uh, great stuff from these ladies. If you've never checked them out, um, "Tried to Be True" is a great song here, and uh, uh, "Closer to Fine" is another good one. Excellent harmonies that they do on their songs. Just fantastic stuff. They've got a real knack. And this might be my favorite album of theirs, uh, Nomads, Indian Saints. It's a good one. Uh, Hammer and a Nail, that's a great song. And uh, One, Two, Three is a great, another excellent track. And uh, You and Me of the Ten Thousand Wars, that's a, a very heart-wrenching ballad. Watershed is another great song on this one. So yeah, it's probably my favorite album. And then the follow-up from that is um, Rites of Passage. Another good one. And they do a... I believe they do a cover of the uh, Dire Straits song Romeo and Juliet. I think that's a cover of their song. I'm not sure. I won't uh, slow down the video by checking the liner notes. Then we come to a soul, rhythm and blues soul group from, I believe they started in the 40s. And so these guys uh, float, fly under the radar of a lot of soul fans because they got their start so early, but they are not to be missed. They're called the Ink Spots, and they're just, oh, they're so good. Um, if I Didn't Care is a great song. I Don't Want to Set the World on Fire. I heard that song in a documentary, which I can't remember what the documentary was about, and uh, I, I shazammed that song to find out who it was, uh, who had done it, and that's how I found out about the Ink Spots. This was five, six, seven years ago. And uh, but yeah, it's just so much, so much good stuff on here. Yeah, if you love classic rhythm and blues and soul music and doo wop, check out the Ink Spots. You'll be glad you did. And now the final artist in today's uh, uh, CD collection chapter is Jack's Mannequin. Here we have uh, Everything in Transit. This one I got thanks to my friend Noah. Uh, he is a big fan of uh, McMahon. Uh, I cannot remember his first name, sorry. But uh, yes, it, uh, oh, Andrew, Andrew McMahon. It's printed right here on the back. <laughs> anyway, I was going to say Vince McMahon, but that's the, the wrestling promo guy, wrestling promotional guy, so that wasn't right. So anyway, Andrew McMahon. Uh, yes, good stuff on here. Uh, not one of my favorite groups, but uh, this is not one of the groups that uh, just grabs you with their songs. You have to absorb them. You have to let them sink in for a while. Uh, and then I found this one. I think I found this one on my own, uh, The Glass Passenger. This was the follow-up to Everything in Transit. Good stuff on here. And then this next one, I believe I found in Dallas. Actually, several of the CDs in this in this block of my collection were ones I came home from Dallas with. Um, People and Things. I love the title of the album. And I think this might be my favorite uh, Jack's Mannequin album. So, yeah. Good stuff on here. I cannot, I've not listened to it enough to give you, um, to be able to give you favorite songs off the track listing. But uh, yes, suffice to say, Jack's Mannequin is growing on me. Thank you, Noah, for introducing me to him, to them. And uh, so, yeah. That Break, uh, that uh, reaches the end of this block of my whole darn CD collection. Chapter 9 is in the books. Uh, stand by soon for Chapter 10. And on and on from there. Ad infinitum. Ad almost infinitum. Uh, but anyway, yes, thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And uh, share my video with people you, you think might like it. Any comments, questions, things you saw missing out of this series that you think I should have or you think I should listen to. Let me know. Some of that stuff I might have on LP back here. You never know. But And maybe I will go into a uh, um, my whole LP collection at some point as well. But anyway, let me start my outro over again. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like the video, share it, subscribe to my channel, and check out my past videos. And don't be uh, afraid to check out the links of my YouTube friends and acquaintances who are down in the description below. They're all well worth watching and uh, you'll get a lot of fun and entertainment out of them as well. But anyway, yes, I guess that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.